Dr. Walson. Uh, hello, folks. Welcome back. Those of you who are coming back, then I'm glad you guys are back. Those of you are checking in just now, then remember, uh, this is like my, my workshops are like a series going back all the way to many months. So don't forget to watch them in a series from the recordings. Now, a quick recap about what we did in part one. So I, in part one, I mainly talk about uh, you know, opportunities that exist for specific skills and things like that in the freelancing arena, something you may wanna do as a way of earning a, a living, perhaps as a side income, a second income, or if you wanna feel too adventurous, you can try to be like me, I'm a full-time uh, freelancer. I haven't worked in a job in almost like 11 years. So freelancing is all I do. Uh, that is why I'm doing this series here because, you know, I, I, I've been freelancing for 11 years so I know a few things. So I'm just sharing them in this series. So today, my plan is to go ahead and focus on the platforms that you can log in. Uh, you know, I talked a little bit about this in the previous session, but today we are going to go a little bit deeper and I'll be talking about, today I'll be mostly speaking about Upwork, the different aspects of Upwork, what works, what doesn't work. And at the end of the workshop, I'm gonna give you a small introduction. Like I gave a small introduction to Upwork in the previous workshop and now I'm going deep into it. And at the end of this workshop, I'll give you a small introduction to Fiverr and I, I plan to go into details about Fiverr in the next session. So today, mainly I'm talking about Upwork. Now again, when I say a platform, now, please understand that when we talk about freelancing, the most common word you will hear is gig economy. So whenever someone says they're a freelancer, you're essentially talking about the gig economy. So I would call myself a gig worker. A, a simple example for those who are completely new is when you think of a, a Uber driver, for example. You know, so Uber driver has the skill of driving. So that person will go ahead and join the Uber driving platform. And then whenever somebody needs to go from place A, place B, you know, they will send a request to Uber and Uber will send a notification to all the drivers in a specific area and whoever is available, that, that person can go ahead and take care of that gig. So that's what I call when I say a freelancing platform. So for me, especially for my career for the last 11 years, what has really been beneficial is Upwork, that is number one, which I'll be talking about today. And number two is Fiverr. There are other platforms as well. I may touch upon them at a later workshop, but today I'll mainly want to talk about Upwork. As always, I really hope you folks have like a notebook and a pen with you because I will be saying a lot of words, especially today, it's not going to be a generic workshop. It's going to be a specific workshop about Upwork. So after the call, hopefully, you know, some of you might try your own hand at freelancing and hopefully you will look up those words that I am talking about today. Now, the main thing is the Upwork works on a system of jobs. Okay. So whenever you go, you know, once you sign up for Upwork and things like that, the first thing you want to be on the lookout for is what is called as jobs. Okay, so the idea is very, very simple. So in every you know, freelancing, there are two aspects, just like the Uber driver. There is a person who wants to travel from one place to another, and there's the Uber driver with the car take, agreeing to take that person from point A to point B. So similarly, with Upwork as well, what happens is you have a person who wants to get some specific work done and they will post what is called as a job requirement. Okay, now at the end of the session, if there's time, I log into my own Upwork account, I'll show you how this works. But right now I'm really more focused on the concepts here. So the main thing is you have jobs and then you go ahead and apply to them and see what that is all about. So really there are just very simple parts of it. There is jobs, and then you apply for them. Okay, so the first thing you are going to do, and I'm assuming after the last workshop or maybe after today, you'll go ahead and sign up for an Upwork account. Then the first thing you wanna do is really apply for jobs and then based on the requirements from clients and stuff like that. Now, before you can apply though, I think this, is, this actually came up in the last workshop, so maybe I should talk about it. 
uh, what, uh, you know, what about signing up for the Upwork account? Now, I really didn't think I had to talk about it, but I felt like, okay, maybe I should. Now, please understand that freelancing, because it is like a, not a salary job and stuff like that, and usually clients are all over the world, there is such a thing called as, you know, um, a trust issue and stuff like that. So make sure when you're up, when you're creating the account, because you can only create your account once, you know, people will say, oh, no, no, if something goes wrong, I'll create a second account or something. But that doesn't really work that way because everything is digitized these days. So you really can't fool the Upwork guys. So make sure you enter, you know, whatever your original name. I remember one time my account was suspended because I made a spelling mistake in my, in my Upwork profile and that name did not match my official government ID. Now you might think that's a very silly thing, right? Because I was already a freelancer for many years. And then suddenly one day I log in and my account was suspended and I was not able to withdraw any money as well. I had a lot of my earnings sitting in Upwork and I couldn't do that. So they, they said that because my name is not matching the exact letters on the government ID I provided, my account has been suspended and it were, they, were, they could have deleted the account as well. And I can't create a second account. It doesn't work that way because when you sign up, they will take your government ID and stuff like that, which obviously you can't create a second government ID. So my, my one thing is in the lot of other rules when you're creating the Upwork account, the main thing is make sure you provide all original IDs. Otherwise, you're kind of, you know, you're going to lose it, you know, if, if something goes wrong. So that's, that's one thing I just want to mention. Other than that, there are a lot of other rules you can find on the Upwork website itself. But the main thing is, yes, in creating the account, make sure you have all the documents, original documents and stuff like that, and go ahead and enter the details without making a mistake. It's almost like you're applying for a real job, where if something goes wrong, you're really able to be fired. But at least there you have, you're dealing with people, you can talk to them, they'll give you a call, they'll be a HR, they'll, you know, you can discuss if something is wrong, but but with Upwork, you know, there's no customer support or anything like that. They only have email support and chat support. So you want to make sure that you get everything right in the first place. Otherwise, it could take many, many email exchanges to get things sorted. So that's the main thing about the account. Make sure you use your original document IDs, original name. And if you are applying with skills that are depending on if you have any certificates, recommendations, awards and stuff like that, everything is you know, in order before you submit to them. Okay, very, very important because there's no rule that you have to supply this information, but whatever you're supplying, make sure that it is accurate. Otherwise, one fine day you'll get up, everything is going well, and boom, your account is suspended. So just be uh, careful about that. Now, coming back. So the main thing is, one, assuming that you got your account set up, you know, you're, you're now active, you have a freelancer profile and everything, the main thing what you do is jobs, you'll, you'll see it on the forum, and then you go ahead and you apply for it. Okay, so this is where I want to tell you. Now, again, this is for beginners, right? So how, what are the things you have to remember when you're applying for a specific job? Now, this is where I wanted to make a note. There is something called as connects. Okay, I'm going to spell that for you. C-O-N-N-E-C-T-S, okay? Connects. I'll repeat that. C O N N E C T S. Now, Upwork uses a currency, kind of. It's not like money currency, but more like a, a Upwork platform currency called a Connects. All right. So the way to think of it is, every time you apply for a job, you have to pay, not real money but you have to pay with connects. Okay, now to give you an example from daily life, you know, you know how you have mobile phones or something, you install some game like Battle Royale or Call of Duty Mobile or something like that. And there, you know, you know how it is like, okay, you wanna buy a new costume or a, a, a new uh, color or something. You have to pay with some 100 gold coins or 200 gold coins. So, you know, I think I think you are getting what I'm talking about. So that is like an in-game currency. They're not real gold coins, they're digital gold coins. So similarly in Upwork, now this is very important. If you're gonna work on Upwork, you need to figure, understand the whole connect system. So every month for free, when you have a free account, I'm gonna talk about the paid account as well. When you have a free account, you will only get 10 connects. 
Now again, it's been a long time since I had a free account. So they may have reduced it or increased it, I don't know, but you only get like 10 connects every month for free, okay? Now, why is this so important? So when you apply for a job, it's like when you apply for a college admission or you apply for a entrance test or something like that, they'll make you pay some nominal amount, right? Like processing charges and things like that. You know, the reason is simple, you know, because the admission, the test, they cost a lot of money. So they have to recover that cost anyway. And also another, another reason why uh, companies and colleges and universities do that is because they want to stop everybody from applying for everything. You know, if there is no admission, you know, if, if there's no fee for the admission form or something like that, then everybody will just apply because they have nothing to lose there other than their time. So similarly, Upwork has a connect system so that you have to pay with the connects every time you apply for a job. And this is why the second next thing I want to mention, you want to make a note is whether you like it or not, if you're serious about freelancing, you have to buy the Upwork membership. Okay, so go ahead, make a note of it. Upwork has a membership system. Okay, so it's, it's about $15 a month. So, so that is very, very essential. There is no escaping it. So for $15, you get two things. One thing you get what is called as a custom URL. Okay, so go ahead. Again, another, another thing I wanted to make a note. So when you pay their subscription fee, you'll get something called the custom URL. Now, what does this custom URL mean? So let me just show you on my screen. So I'm gonna go away from the PowerPoint for one minute, guys. So let me go back to the browser here. Uh, there we go. So let me go to my own, let me do one thing. As I told you many times, just have to Google my name and you'll find me. So I'm just Googling myself. And somewhere here, ah, there you go, see? Uh, let me just zoom in, okay? And I wanted to focus on this. And this is why there are some people who are like, hey man, you know what? Why should I buy their subscription or something? Now, let me get my marker. And there it is, Dr. Walsin, are you able to see it, sir? That is my profile. And you'll see that at the end of my name, it's actually my name. Now, it may seem like an obvious, simple thing for those who are watching, but please understand, if you don't have a paid account, your name won't come like that. You'll have some random alpha numeric numbers, okay? So the, one of the reasons why my name comes up when you Google is because Upwork is pretty big company in the world. So, so, so it, it, they have what is called as SEO, search engine optimization. They have very good SEO, okay? So when you pay that extra $15, now it may seem like a big amount. I understand, you know, like, 10 years ago, $15, a lot of money for me. So I understand, but even then I was still paying it, right? So, so the idea is simple. So they put your name there and they really work hard to spread your name all over the internet. You know, they take care of marketing on your behalf. So one of the reasons why I think my name comes up when you Google, I would say 50% is my blogging, my podcasting, my YouTube channel and all those things. But I think the remaining 50% is because of the whole Upwork uh, premium subscription and you know, the $15 thing that I pay every month. So, so uh, Dr. Wasi, is that clear to you, sir? What's the whole point? Okay, I can see Dr. Wasi shaking. So there you go, guys. So yes, started, everything is cool. Yes, there you go, there you go. So remember guys, now, uh, as I keep saying to all my, you know, I, I do a lot of workshops here in Bangalore. I, I, have, I, I do a lot of consulting for my customers. If you want to make money, you have to spend money first, okay? Very simple policy, you know, it's very easy. So, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna save $15, maybe you are saving $15, but in the long run, you might be losing hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars because your name is invisible. You know how people say everything, it's all there in the name. You know, a name is so important. Like for example, my name, it is so difficult to pronounce. So I use a short name called Jay, Easy to type, easy to say, makes everyone's life easy. So it's all in the name, right? So similarly, so there you go. So first thing you're gonna do is, when you log into Upwork, create an account. Remember it'll take you one week, two weeks, sometimes a month to get your Upwork account approved. So be patient, be very, very patient, all right? Once it is approved, next thing is you need connects. You'll get 10 for free, but if you get the paid subscription, you'll get the name, they'll do some SEO for you. And also you will get about, I think 50 to 75 connects every month. 
Okay, so that's one of the big benefits of the premium subscription. So you have more currency to spend when you apply for a job. So I'm gonna come back to my PowerPoint now. So there you go, my dear students. So when you talk about Upwork, applying for jobs, many people don't think of this as an expense because an average job application needs at least eight connects. Now imagine that for a second. So especially when you're new, you may have to apply for at least five jobs every day. Now, remember, now let's say you're working every day, right? Monday to Sunday, there's seven days, or you like your weekend, so Monday to Friday. So you're working, you're trying to get work five days, right? Five days per week, right? That means every day, let's say you apply for five jobs. So one job is eight connects. So five into eight is 40 connects. So you may be spending approximately 40 connects in a single day. And remember, if you're like established like me, then fine. You know, I don't have to worry too much. A lot of times customers will message me themselves. I don't have to do anything actually. Life is good. But when I started, I had to apply every day, every day, every day. So every day I was spending 30 to 40 connects. So in a week, that is like 40 into five, that's 200 connects. And in a month, that is almost 800 connects. Okay, now that is again, you know, you only get like 60 connects a month, even with the paid subscription. So when you have a new account, you may have to buy, just like how in a video game, you have to pay money to get that extra gold, extra silver, extra diamond. So similarly on Upwork, you may have to spend some extra money, especially when you are a new person, new freelancer, where you have to apply for more jobs, that you'll be spending more money on the next. Okay, now it's a big part of Upwork, you know, so just wanna make sure you guys are getting it. Dr. Watson, is my explanation clear, sir? Because before I move on to the next topic, I wanna make sure that was clear to you. And of course, guys, don't worry if you have questions, we will take the questions at the end, because I'll be talking for about 45 minutes and then we'll take questions. So Dr. Watson, but what about you, sir? Are you able to follow through as a, as a, new, as a new person to Upwork? Yeah, definitely, and I'm assuming that, so it is for all our participants. Okay, okay, very good, very good. So there you go, folks. So that's about the connecting. Now remember, these are all just technicalities. Now, the second thing is, how do you search for jobs? You know, that's very important, isn't it? Because yeah, you can apply, let's say, you, you know, in the beginning, you set aside some $20, $30 just to buy Connects. You're paying for subscription. You're ready. You're ready with Connects, and you're somehow solved the Connects issue. The next thing is, how do you apply for jobs? Now, remember, you can't just apply for all the jobs. It never works that way. But the good thing is, uh, just like Google search and all that, Upwork has a pretty good search engine. So you really don't have to worry too much about it, okay? The main thing here is, as I mentioned in the first session, you must be very clear, what is the skill that you're trying to offer? What is your skill? Because on Upwork, there are hundreds of jobs posted every day, uh, covering everything from, you know, I got some crazy, and you know, I remember this one client, he's still there, I think. You know, his job says, teach me anything. There are some crazy people on Upwork. And every week he posts a new job and he always says the same thing. I'm bored, teach me something, teach me something. Look at that, that that's what he says every week. You know, sometimes I see him, sometimes I also apply, even though I know, I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe he's a crazy guy, we don't know. But then again, there are people looking for specific skill sets. So main thing is obviously in freelancing, you need to know why you are there, okay? So you need to make sure you search for the things you are good at. So once again, what I'll do here is I'll go back to my own account. Let me go ahead, go to my account here. So I'm gonna say upwork.com, right? Now, what are my skills then? So my skills is obviously tutoring and teaching. So you can see right there, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. You can see that I already have put some specific categories, which I check almost every day. So most of my work involves tutoring and teaching, coaching and stuff like that. So, so what I'll do is whenever I need some new work, like right now I'm already occupied with clients. I don't have to apply for jobs every day. So I am already set here, but still let's assume that I'm just starting now and how would I go ahead and search for something? 
So let's pick something. Oh, Dr. Walson, give me a skill, sir. Give me something, and I'll try to find a job based on whatever skill you say, Professor. Video engineer. Video engineer. Okay, so there you go, folks. So Dr. Walson, you know, he's like, okay, you know, perhaps because of my sessions, Dr. Walson is like, yes, I'm gonna get on that Upwork thing, yeah. And then he's like, okay, now, video engineer, uh, from, from my own experience, uh, that word may not come up with something, but if I change the word engineer to editor, now that is something which is a, a gig related word. Now, this is what I'm saying, guys. You have a skill, like Dr. Walson, in, 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 in the mind, he's thinking video engineer, but a little bit of uh, research will tell him that, okay, video engineer may not work out in the industry because video engineer in the movies is actually video editor. So there you go, Dr. Walson. So I'll go here and I'll just search Video editor. And see, let us just like Google, it starts automatically. Now you can see how many categories there are. Now, why is this important? Now, try to understand, guys. When you are young, and you probably know this, but I'm telling you as well. When you are young, you do not know who you are, whether it is personal life, professional life, you rarely know who you are. Okay, like for example, when I was young, I knew I was going to be a software developer. But I didn't know anything else. Only now, later, did I realize, okay, my speciality is .NET. My speciality is I have good English. So I'm going to combine these two things and focus on that. Similarly, if you're just starting, then just go with the general video editor and select that. And you'll see all the jobs. There are some 8,000 jobs. You know what I'm talking about? There are always jobs and upwork. It's the largest freelancing platform in the world. I'm not, that's why I keep telling you when you create the account, make sure you're very careful. Don't mess it up. Okay, so there you go. Now here again, you'll see there are a lot of jobs being posted, stuff like that. Now this is a very general thing. Okay, there are a lot of filters here on the left side. If I were you, I would obviously go for the entry level category on the left side. And you can choose what kind of hourly rate you're looking for. Now, obviously you may be tempted, hey, you know what? I'm gonna make $100 per hour today and just choose the highest value, but you have to understand. You now, like we say in India, uh, whatever amount of money you're willing to spend, uh, that's how tasty the candy is going to be. You know? So I'm, I'm trying to translate that from my local language here. So obviously if somebody is willing to pay $100, $200 per hour, there are such contracts on Upwork, by the way, they're obviously expecting a combination of expertise, references, work experience, and of course, a lot of projects on Upwork as well as outside, okay? So it's like, imagine you know, you're, you're walking on the mall, you're walking in the mall, you see an Apple store, you know how it is, right? An Apple store with the shiny aluminum walls, the white lighting, the attractive, uh, you know, the shopkeepers and all that. Obviously you walk in, the guy says, hey man, the new iPhone is $80,000. No, not 80,000, sorry, $800. And then you're like, okay, it's worth it. it. It's worth it because it's an iPhone. So you're already, your mind is, your mind knows that's the kind of place that is. So you have to imagine yourself, what kind of shop you are, you know? If you are a basic shop, then you need to go after the basic rates. If you feel you're really experienced and high quality, then go for the higher price projects. Now, ultimately, what is the right price? We don't know. It's all experimentation, guys. It's all experimentation. It's like when you go to the fashion shop or something and you're trying on clothes. Now, what size fits you? What is your size? It's difficult to say. You try out different clothes until you figure out which size is the most comfortable for you. So when it comes to the hourly rate, I'm not gonna give you any specific advice on that because it depends on each person. But I will tell you this much though, when I started like years ago, I always went after the contracts, you know, the jobs with the lowest budget. Okay, now why is that? Now it makes sense, you are new. Okay, you know, like for example, uh, you will see these actors, like, you know, you know, like for example, Rock, uh, Dr. Walsing, do you know the Rock? Uh, the actor, sir, from the WWE, you know, the action hero, The Rock. Okay, there you go. Now, I, I don't know if you guys know it. I, he, he was just a WWE wrestler, right? You know, WWE wrestlers, they don't get that much money. I mean, they make money, yeah, it's not, but it's not like it's so much money. But now the same Rock is making movies and charging 10 million, 20 million per movie. So there you go. That's, 
there you go. So obviously, you know, ultimate, so freelancing is exactly like that. So when you start, don't you have very less choices? Go after the basic beginner budget contracts. Even if you feel, even if your skills are better, remember you need to put some projects under your belt. That is very, very important, okay? Now, again, I'm just gonna show you my own profile. Let me do one thing. So let me go ahead and if I go, let me try to show you. Okay, there we go. So once again, I'm gonna just search my own name and it should come again. Uh, where is that? Oh, there you go. So when somebody looks at your Apple profile, they should be able to see that you have completed a lot of projects. See, that is what I'm talking about. So until you have a lot of projects under your belt, try to keep your pricing expectations on the lower side. And I'll, I'll tell you something from experience. Even if a client hires you for a lower price and they start liking your work, I promise you, you can actually ask for a raise. And, and every time I've asked for a raise, I have got it because they know your value now. And I'll tell you something, just like how it's difficult to get a good client, it is also the other way around. It is difficult for a client to get a good freelancer, but they don't want to lose you. So don't worry about getting stuck at a lower price. If your work is good, the client will know your value and you can talk to them and then you can go ahead and ask for a hike. So when it comes to applying for jobs, that's what you are going to do. You're going to search for jobs, pick the right topic based on your skill. When you are new, because this workshop is for people who are new, make sure you choose the lower budget project and then go ahead and apply for it. Now, don't forget, Every time you apply, connects will go away. You know, it just goes away, it costs a lot of money. So when you're applying, make sure you're applying and you feel like you have a good chance of getting a call back, okay? Now that is the another aspect of Upwork. So let me just go back to my PowerPoint slide here. So once you start applying them, okay, they will, you, you'll have an opportunity to write them like a letter, like a job letter or something and then they will get a message that you applied. Upwork will take the connects, okay? If you have 50 connects, a job is eight connects. So 50 out of 58 is gone. Now you have only 42 and then they'll message to you. And then depends if they like your profile, if they like what you said, they may call you back. If they don't like you, then the connects is gone. There's, you're not gonna get it back if you get rejected. Sorry about that, you know? Um, and then that's 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 just how it works. And and you know uh, maybe this maybe I'll talk about it some other day. But guys, you know what? There's a reason why I'm good in sales. You know, I did MBA in marketing and sales. And before I became a freelancer, I was in sales. And people like me, we are masters at handling rejection. I don't think I'll get into that today. Maybe some other day I'll do a workshop on handling rejections or something. I'm not talking about love life. I'm just talking about business, although rejection happens in love life as well. But I'm telling you, so in the beginning days, you will have to deal with a lot of rejections. Okay, it's not like rejected. People will just not reply to you. You don't know what happened. You don't know why they didn't like you. The whole thing is up in the air. Okay, so some other day I'll go into deep about how to handle rejections. You know, otherwise you can't run this business thing. Anyway, so Dr. Walton, is that clear, sir? Uh, searching for jobs, you know, matching your skill, uh, going after the budget, uh, the connect system, uh, handling rejection, we'll talk about it some other day. Uh, um, okay, so uh, I'll just take a sip of water here, Professor, and then I'll go on to the next step, uh, which is contracts and types. Okay, all right, guys. So the next thing I wish to talk about, oh, 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 yeah, we have time. Sorry, I thought the time is over. Okay, all right. Now, the next thing about Upwork is there are two types of contracts in Upwork. Now, not everybody is going to be compatible with both type of contracts, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about both the types of contracts. So again, this is where I'm going to remind you in your notebook, make a note, you have fixed contracts or fixed amount contracts. That is contract type number one. 
And the second type of contract is hourly contract. Okay, so two types of contracts, fixed contracts, and then hourly contracts. Now, when I'm talking about contract, before I go into specifics, I have to talk to you about the, you know, the big bear in the building, which are platform fees. Okay, now I don't know how many of you guys understand what platform fees is. Platform fees is similar to taxes, all right? Uh, or if you have gone to a casino or something, when you win something, you don't actually get the full amount. I don't know if you know that. You know, if you win $100, the house takes its cut, some 10% or 20%. So if you win a million dollars, you don't actually take, get to take home a million dollars. You actually get very less than that. And don't forget the government is always waiting in the background, trying to take it to tax and stuff like that. You may have heard stories about people talking like, hey, hey I won a lottery or something, but they only get like half the money or something. I mean, what is that? Anyway, I'm not gonna comment on that. It's none of my business. But anyway, so every platform will charge a percentage of whatever money you're making on the platform. Now that is called Upwork fees. Now, this is different from the connects, okay? So every time, whatever type of contract you're going for, Upwork takes a flat 10%. Okay, now last year, till last year, or maybe till June, I don't know, it's been a while, but they had different rates for different type of freelance. But this year, uh, you know, for, it's, it's very useful for people like me because I used to work on big contracts, so I would get very low cut fees. Uh, but then for some reason this week, they canceled all that. And now it has become a flat 10%. So let's say you have a contract, whether it is fixed contract or an hourly contract, and you're getting $20 per hour, then 10%, you will have to say goodbye. That is the upward fee. And also, they will deduct the tax depending on which country you are in. So fee is gone, tax they will deduct. So if you have a contract for $20 per hour, you'll actually get very, very less than that. So if you're in a country which takes a lot of tax, for example, United States, one of the highest taxing nations, if I'm not wrong, Dr. Walson, I'm sure, is that, isn't it right, sir? Yeah, there you go, guys. So, you know, the more powerful a country is, the higher are the taxes. And that's how it works. Uh, so, obviously, India is a developing nation. So, our taxes are very, very low. Uh, so, there is that. So, there you go, guys. Depending on which country you're from, depending on your country regulations, you will, I mean, the, the fees 10% is fixed. And then you, you have to get your tax deducted as well. So, when you have a $20 contract, the actual money you make is actually very, very less. So you need to keep this in mind. Now, why is this important? Why am I talking about this so long before I jump into the types of contracts? The reason is simple. Suppose you feel that your skill is worth $20 per hour. Don't blindly put the amount as $20 in the upward. If you want $20 in your hand, you wanna add the fees, you wanna add the taxes, and other things and expenses, you know, that you may have additional taxes, additional deductions, depending on where you live. So if you need $20 per hour, you actually have to bid for 25 or 23 or 26 or even $30 per hour just to get the actual amount you're asking for. A lot of freelancers forget about this. You know, they feel like, hey, you know what? The bill says $20 per hour. I'm going to get $20 per hour. It doesn't work that way. Real life doesn't work that way. There are always middlemen. Upwork is the middleman here. He will take his cut. And the government is also the middleman. The government will always take the cut. So there you go, guys. Dr. Watson, is that clear, sir? The whole amount deciding factor. Okay, Dr. Watson is nodding. So there you go. Okay. So now that we talked about the money thing, my friend. So as I said, remember to add that extra expenses before you give the final price or just make peace with the fact that you're getting less. You know, it's really your call how you want to go about these things. Uh, so moving on, two types of contract. The first type of contract is fixed type contract. And the second type of contract is hourly contract. So I'm going to start by talking about fixed type contract. 
And I'm going to talk about the hourly type of contract next. So these two will be the last two topics I talk about. There are some uh, small, small things I want to mention. I'll mention that later. Now, the fixed type contract is when you are absolutely sure how much effort it takes to finish a specific work. Now, this can only happen with experience. Especially when I was younger, I used to work on a lot of fixed type contracts, mainly because I had no idea how long something will take to finish. That's very important. So if you're new, if you're just starting, please compromise. I'll tell you this much, fixed type is always a compromise. It's always a compromise and it's always a loss for the freelance. Because I'm telling you, the guys who are hiring you, they are in the business of hiring for many years. They know what they are doing. They know what they want. Okay, but the good thing is with fixed contracts, there are more options because the client always feels they are getting a good deal. And the, also, you already know how much you will make, right? I mean, you may be working a little bit extra. You may be working a little bit less, but at least you know, like, hey, you know what? I have a fixed contract of $600 for a month. So you know already you are going to get that amount. It's not going to go high. It's not going to go low. It's fixed. So there you go. So when you one and you're a newcomer, fix it contracts are better because the client believes that they're getting more for their what they're paying for, which is usually true because you'll be usually be working more because it's fixed contract, right? Like let's say something takes 10 hours, but when you start the project, you realize it actually takes 20. So, so there you go. And now you can't back off. You already agreed to the contract. You have to do the job. Now, this is where experience comes into the picture, right? You, you, the, the experience will tell you, hey, you know what? This one will take 15 hours. I'm going to ask for this much. So this kind of stuff will happen slowly over time. So that's the main thing about fixed type contract. The benefit is there is no variation. You know how much you're going to make. Good for beginners because the clients are much more friendly in fixed type contract. Uh, but yes, you know, the negative side is you may end up working more than what you agreed for. But, but you know what? Sometimes, well, you know, sometimes this happens to a lot of people. As you start working, you realize that you're actually better than what you thought. In which case, the client may believe that it will take you, say, 20 hours to finish the work. What if you're so smart and you are finishing it in five hours? Now, it doesn't happen to everybody, but if it's happening to you, then good for you. Uh, there's another sign that you're doing a great job. And next contract, maybe you want to negotiate a higher price. But, but then again, you know, very few people are talented like that. So a lot of times you're usually working more. Uh, with a fixed type contract, but you do have that comfort that, hey, this much amount you are definitely going to make. So that's about the fixed type contract where they pay you and the money usually comes within, you know, almost immediately, like sometimes like less than five days. So, so that's another thing, you know, the moment they approve the payment, the, the, the money comes in a few days. So there is that. So that's about the fixed type contract. Uh, Professor Watson, is there anything which I missed out or something, sir, before I move on to the hourly contract? Everything in crystal clear. Okay, okay. So guys, now about the hourly contract. Now the hourly contract is a slightly different type of beast. And hourly contract is also where you will find more of the experienced freelancers. So it's very rare for a, a fresher or a newcomer to get an hourly contract. You know, unless you already have a lot of certifications, experience, references and stuff like that. In the beginning, it may be difficult to get an hourly contract or you may get hourly contracts which are like really, really low price. Now, there are a lot of contracts on Upwork which pay like $4 per hour, $2 per hour, $5 per hour, stuff like that. 
okay but still it is hourly though now no so but of course once you become experienced okay you know what your worth is and you have a nice profile presence on upwork you can jack up your prices you can increase the prices now again your prices should be in line with the market now this is very important okay now you can't just jack up your prices like crazy it doesn't work that way you need to look at what other freelancers are doing so if you are a video editor you know, that's the example we are taking today you see that a lot of experienced guys are charging $60 per hour, $100 per hour, $30 per hour. You also should notice what other freelancers in your country are charging. Now, this is very important, okay? Now, for example, if, you know, if you look at, you know, you can go and look at other people's freelancers. Like, for example, you can look at mine, just Google my name. So you can look at other people's freelancers. Like, if you find European freelancers or American freelancers or UK freelancers, Australian freelancers, now, these are countries which are already developed countries. So these guys, they always charge a lot of money, like $60, 80, 100, 150. So if you are gonna compare your prices, once you have enough experience, if you're in US, it makes sense to compare yourself to a US video editor, okay? But let's say I'm in India right now, right? So if I have to compare my prices to other Indian tutors, Indian business coaches, Indian consultants, that makes sense to me. So when I have to bid for a project and I'm deciding on the price, what I do is I look at what my other Indian people are bidding for the project. If they are charging $80 per hour for a coaching session, I will do the same. Even if I feel I'm worth more than that. And if I see a lot of other people applying for software projects at $40 or $30 or $20, I also apply for the same rate. And you know, you can always find out how good or bad another freelancer is, you know, like. Well, if you look at my profile, you see things like I have a lot of certifications. I got an award from Microsoft, blah, 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 all those things. I see another freelancer. Maybe he has two awards from Microsoft. Maybe he has three certificates and I only have one certificate and he is charging only 40. Obviously, I can't ask for 50. It doesn't work that way. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio can't ask for more money than Brad Pitt. They're both equally good looking guys. It doesn't work that way. You know, that's how it is. So you got to compare your prices. I see a lot of freelancers. They're like, oh, I need 50, so I'm going to charge 50. No, it doesn't work that way. Even Avatar can only make $3 billion. That's the limit. You know, James Cameron can't start shouting, oh, my movie is going to make 10 billion. No, no, 3 billion is the limit for movies. You can't go beyond that. There's a number limit for it. So same thing with hourly rate. So when you're bidding, look at your own experience. Look at what your friends from the same country are charged. Two things you need to remember. And also, you know, think about fixed contract is usually, you know, you can end the contract and stuff like that, you know, once the work is done. But with hourly contracts, you know, clients, they kind of get married to the hours, okay? Now, this is very dangerous. So if a client hires you, for five dollars per hour after one year they still expect you to continue working for five dollars per hour it is so dangerous so be very careful with hourly contracts okay don't agree for really long term or something you know tell them hey man you know what i can do this for three months you know somewhere add a note in your contract when you sign the online digital contract that you know what this I can call I can hold this price for three months I can hold this price for for six months I can hold this price uh, for eight months so try to have that serious conversation okay if you can't have the conversation you'll you'll be filled with regret you know it's like going to a restaurant and ordering something and then realizing you don't want it but you already paid for it so you have to eat it now so that is about the hourly contracts on Upwork. So, so hopefully that gives you an idea about the key points in Upwork. Setting up, set up your account, make sure you give all real details. If you don't have any certifications, then don't mention it. It's okay, it's fine. It's not a real job. So it's okay if you don't have any certifications, it's fine. Just put your government ID and other things which you'll have anyway and get the account working, no problem. Second thing is searching for jobs. Make sure 
you search for jobs which matches your skill. Now, if you have multiple skills, focus on the one skill that you're really good at. Don't do that mistake that a lot of people do. You know, like in India, we say, don't travel on two boats because eventually one of the boat will go in the side direction and you'll fall into the river. Don't do that, please. You can do it later, you know, when you're like really expert and all that, then maybe two boats, three boats, why not 10 boats? But in the beginning, one boat. Thing. So if you're a video editor and you're also like a magician, ask yourself, which one are you good at? If you're a great magician, then go for it. If you're a, a good video editor, go for it. Please don't do both. It's a complete waste of time. And don't forget, connects, connects, connects. If you're applying for one type of job, you, have, you know, your connect budget is this much. If you're applying for two types of jobs, your connect budget is this much. So it's, it's like, you know, exponential. Don't let that happen to you. So focus on one skill. Next, fix it contracts or hourly contract. Fix it contract, the good thing is, you know how much you're gonna make, relatively easy to get, okay? Uh, and, and stuff like that. Hourly contract, good once you start having some experience or if you're willing to work for low prices, uh, but then be very careful with hourly contract. You don't want to get stuck in the same rate for many, many months. You know, many a times I had to have very, very serious discussion, especially when I was younger, okay? Now it's okay. Now my prices are good, so I don't have to worry too much about it. But when I was younger, you know, a client likes me and I realize after a few months that I'm actually better than what I am, but I'm stuck working for a low price and I don't want to make a client upset. Now, guys, I'll tell you one thing. In India, we, you know, again, I'm sorry for mentioning India so many times, but for me and for a lot of businessmen in India, a client is like a God, you know? We, you know, for me, every day I get up, I say, thank you, client. I do that because without my clients, I am nothing, okay? Even if it's a low paying client, even if it's a client who's very annoying, you know, a client who's like very, very, uh, some clients are like too involved. Some clients, I never even talk to them. So you gotta be cool with that. So there you go. So hourly contract and fixed price contract. So those are the main things I want to talk, guys. And then don't forget about the connect thing. Connects, connects, connect. And Upwork, you do online, you'll see a lot of complaints about connects on LinkedIn, on forums. People are always complaining, oh, the connects is so expensive. Oh, it costs so much money. Oh, I have to spend so much connects. Guys, it is the price of doing business. If it's raining, you have to buy a raincoat. You can't complain. You can't stand in the road and say, hey, I had to spend money on a raincoat. I'm sorry. That is the nature of the beast. I'm not trying to side with Upwork here, but I'm just trying to be practical. Look, it's their platform and they need to make money. And also Connects make sure that only those people who are serious will apply. Now, can you imagine if Connects wasn't there, that everybody would be applying for every job in the world. Then there you go. The loss is ultimately for you. So anyway, so that's about the connects, guys. Now that I think is my time here. So there are more things, folks. You know, I want to talk a little bit of Upwork as well. But I, as I mentioned, I'm going to be speaking about that in the next session. But Fiverr is a little bit of a, a different beast, okay? In Fiverr, the whole system revolves around what is called as gigs. Not the gig I was talking about. In Fiverr, a gig is a separate thing. So I will dig deeper into it and in the next workshop, I believe. Uh, and of course, please understand, some freelancers, they make more money on Fiverr. Some freelancers, they make more money on Upwork. So I will be talking about what works better. For example, majority of my revenue comes from Upwork, even though I have an account with a lot of good ratings and badges and accomplishments on Fiverr, I don't get that much work. So there you go. There's a specific style of work which works well in Fiverr and some other things which work well on Upwork. So we will be talking about that in the next session, guys. So uh, Dr. Walson, sir, I believe I have taken up almost 15 minutes of my allotted time here. So uh, the remaining time, of course, sir, I'm giving it away for the Q&A stuff, sir. And as you always know, Professor, I don't mind if we go about a few minutes. <laughs>